This is a lesson you should truly pay attention to because this can make you a heck of a lot more money. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to give you a little lesson here as well as show you a few things that I found on a haul. Now, the, the big point today is misidentified items. One thing I find quite often is where someone states something is from here, let's say Japan, when it turns out it's from somewhere else. Many times people mix up stuff like that. Um, sometimes it's even the people who were there. They went to many different places and they misidentify something at, say, an estate sale or at a local auction. You'll see stuff like that. Flea markets, even garage sales. You are going to find things that the owner states it is this and that is all that it is. And I would honestly not pay attention to most of those. Most family members, if it wasn't theirs, and even sometimes if it was, misidentify things all the time. Now, I went and picked up a whole bunch of stuff that said it was from Japan. After digging into it for just a few minutes, I realized by the addresses that it wasn't Japan. None of it was Japan. It was actually from China. And if you've watched my channel or you're in the know, Chinese stuff from pre-1970 or before goes for some good money. There is a high collectible field in Chinese collectibles. Earliest is always the better. I've got some items from the 1920s and 30s from what was said to be a trip to Japan. Well, it didn't turn out it was Japan, as I said, because... The addresses do not match for Japan. These are all addresses from China. This is Nanking Road, which is a road in Shanghai. And if you look up the actual name of the hotel, you'll find out it's in Shanghai as well. So this is one of those things that can get you a lot of money just because of that. So this is one of those areas where you can make a lot of extra money just because someone misidentified something. I run into misidentified things pretty much everywhere I go. It happens all the time. Even thrift stores will state it's this or it's that, and it's not. So I'm always cautious. Now, it can work against you, too. If you pay attention to what they're telling you something is, you may look it up and find out that it's not at all what they say it is. I never take for granted any description or identification on things like that. Now, I picked up a whole bunch of paper, and I'll probably show some of this in a Patreon video, but just a few other things to look for are these photo booth snapshots. These are those instant developed ones. There's people that just collect this. Now, this is a whole family. Not only that, this is the family that went to China, not Japan. Now, cards like this card here can sell for over 100 bucks if you get the right one. If this was, say, a steamship-related card, had a steamship information with a dock in Shanghai or something, it could have been worth double that amount as well. So there's a ton of value in these. Whenever I'm out there, again, no matter what the description of the item states, I always look it up. If I don't know myself that those descriptions of whatever I'm looking at is correct, I look it up. I never, ever trust it. Even if I'm pretty sure, but not 100%, I look all of that stuff up. It's the only way you're going to get the good stuff. It's the only way you're not going to waste your money. Don't trust what other people say on the items. Now, I'm not saying they're intentionally misidentifying a single solitary thing. Many people just assume that's where it was or what it is or stuff like that. Stuff that's passed on from family members for 100 years plus gets misidentified all the time. Estate sales is usually the best place to find a ton of misidentified things. Even the people that run the estate sales don't know everything. They know certain areas very well. People like me show up and actually help people at estate sales before they open them to give them information and knowledge on things. When certain items show up around here, I'm usually able to see them first and help them identify them. doesn't necessarily mean that I'll get a good deal or I'll get first dibs or anything. That doesn't always happen, but I don't mind helping, so at least I know what's at a sale, know if I want to be in line first or something like that. Now, this one's a fairly easy mistake if you don't know your roads, if you don't know locations. Nanking is a very famous road. There's a ton of very famous hotels and other buildings and establishments on that road. Uh, World War II, you'll find GIs with all kinds of stuff with Nanking Road on it. 
there was a GI soldier, like a bar cabaret on that road as well. So there's a lot of things there. Shanghai is usually where a lot of these items come from as well because it was a main stop way early on in, in travel and transportation. Shanghai was a big city. It was an international city. It still is for, for that matter. But misidentified items are super, super great. Even like these snapshot booth photos here, I've sold single ones for 20 and 30 bucks. So there's a value even in those. You just got to pay attention. The photo booths are like the precursor to some of the earlier Polaroids as well that you could take and wait and it would develop them in a machine. You'd go to a fair, a festival. Uh, if it was during a war or something like that, there'd be a USO booth or Catholic Relief Services or something like that would offer those as well. Even Coca-Cola and Pepsi had booths where you could record records or take a photo as well and send them to your loved one overseas. So a lot of this stuff is routinely picked up by us. It's stuff I always look for. It's stuff I always sell. It's stuff I always make money from as well. So be on the lookout. Don't just go by what they say. There's just so many situations where I've had stuff misidentified, where it's led me to make a ton of extra money. Now, I've said this before as well. We all have the same opportunity. The buyer, the seller, we all have the same opportunity to look up, identify, and understand what we're selling or what we're buying. It is your responsibility to do that, either as a buyer, reselling buyer, or as a seller. You've got to know what you got. If you don't know what you have, you could sell it too cheap and lose money. If you don't know what you're buying, again, you could buy junk and spend too much money as well. Now, in these cases, too, I let them set the price. I paid what the asking price was. I didn't quibble. I didn't argue. I paid what they wanted for it. Now, of course, it was worth a lot more than I paid for it because it wasn't stated as being uh, from China. Most people, collector-wise, again, should know that Chinese stuff from this time, from the 1920s and 30s, is worth a heck of a lot more than uh, Japanese stuff from the very same time. The Japanese market was more international for a longer time. It's still international at this point. China, just you just don't find stuff as much from the earlier days of China anymore. A lot of those items were sent with travelers, so it wasn't something that would have stayed around in China. A lot of people collecting those types of items from China weren't around when these places were here or used and things like that as well. So pay attention. Understand what you're buying. Always look it up. Don't trust what they say. Now, I'll give you one last example. I get people contacting me asking for help identifying things. Sometimes it's stuff that was bought at an auction. They bought stuff thinking it was worth a lot of money because of what the auction ID'd it as. And when I look at the stuff, I've got to tell them all the time that you, they were misidentified. It's not what it states. It's not correct. Um, so again, people lose money every single day in reselling by misidentifying things or buying things without understanding what they are. So lesson for today is don't waste your money. Spend the extra few minutes looking it all up. So don't shell out a lot of money without knowing it's going to hurt you and it's going to cost you. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
very good Pabst. America's premium beer since 1844. Pabst, a lot to look forward to.